هيا يا رفيق الدرب هيا نسلك النهج السوي في سبيل الله نمضي نقتفي فيه النبي نبعث الحب أريجا فائح العطر شذيا نملأ الآفاق نورا وبهاء سرمديا يا رفيق الدرب هيا نسلك النهج السوي في سبيل الله نمضي نقتفي فيه النبي نبعث الحب أريجا فائح العطر شذيا نملأ الآفاق نورا وبهاء سرمديا وإخاء صادقا عذبا بقيا أريحيا يا رفيق الدرب بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed all praise and gratitude be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As such, we ask Allah subhanahu to send His peace and blessing upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his entire family, his noble companion, and those who follow him in his footsteps to the day of Jeremiah Mubarak. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to welcome you to the Plain Truth TV. I'm your host, Abu Muhammad Ali al-Ansari. I'd like to welcome you with Islamic greeting. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa maghfirah. Welcome to our show tonight, which is Reverse Story to Islam. We are with us, our brother Muhammad Abdul Wali. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, brother? Alhamdulillah. How's everything going? Alhamdulillah. So today, tonight, we, inshallah, we will be talking about the brother's story, how he became Muslim. So please introduce yourself, you know, little tell, me, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, well, first of all, my name is uh, Muhammad Abdul Wali Wali. I am the CEO and co-founder of the Young Insight Institute. MashaAllah. Um, that started back in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we're coming into almost seven years now. Uh, MashaAllah. MashaAllah, that's good. Um, how long you been a Muslim? I've uh, been a Muslim. I uh, took my Shahada back in 1991. SubhanAllah. Um, I was in the military. I was stationed overseas at the time. I was in Germany. Mm. Subhanallah, mashallah. So tell us a little bit about your background. You know how you grew up, your childhood, so on and so forth. Um, uh, <laughs> my childhood growing up uh, from down south. I don't know if you can tell from the accent. Mm. I'm from down south, uh, South Georgia, uh, a couple of hours away here from Atlanta. Mm. Um, I grew up as a as a guy in a small country town. Um, <laughs> MashaAllah. Went to high school, played ball, uh, was in sports and everything like that. Okay, that's good. Um, so life was good in when you were growing up in the countryside. Yeah, it's always good. <laughs> <laughs> MashaAllah. <laughs> so prior to Islam, you know, what was your belief system? What kind of belief system did you have? Okay, yeah. Um, my family, how we grew up and stuff, we, we, we grew up Church of Christ members, Christians. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, we come from that back. I come from that background there. Mm -hmm. So you were Christians, mm -hmm. okay? Alhamdulillah. Um, so what 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 particular belief system did those Christians have? Like mainstream Christianity, or they believe something that's different? Well, the the uh, thing that I notice about uh, well, when kids growing up here in America mm -hmm. and stuff, you you more or less going to follow the religion that your parents. Uh, Follow. Follow. No. So, because, you know, the parents run the house, so you're going to go where they tell you to go and worship how they tell you to worship. Mm -hmm. uh, coming from a Christian household, mm -hmm. of course, we did the uh, Christmas, all the other... Uh, holidays. Yeah, all, the, all the other pagan holidays. So, I don't know. Yeah, so, did you believe that Jesus was God? Those were your beliefs, or you believed that Jesus was Son of God? Uh -huh. The Church of Christ, uh, mm -hmm. they was teaching us stuff that he was the Son of God. The Son of God. Uh, not God, but the Son of God. Okay. That's um, that's quite interesting. So, what made you believe? What did you find with that belief system that made you, you know, say, let me take a step back mm -hmm. and I see something over there that's not quite clear? Well, um, one of the things that I noticed um, once I left mm -hmm. and went out into the world on my own, as I graduated high school and mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was in trade school at the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as you come into uh, adulthood, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, to where you want to, you know, do things for yourself because you had your parents and your mother really almost taking care of you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So now you have to take care of yourself. Being able to take care of yourself, you have to think for yourself. Yeah. So uh, when you get out into society, mm -hmm. uh, as a lone individual in this, in this big cold world, mm -hmm. and you will see, you you like, well, how come? One of the things that would get me is mm -hmm. like, how can we be learning from the same book and you be uh, uh, prejudiced towards me or, or you would treat me in a certain way? Mm -hmm. And so you would look at that and be like, wait a minute, man, I thought he was what to come. I thought he was this and I thought they were this and that. Mm -hmm. but, you, but you see people follow their own lineage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically what turned you off is like the people making on their own belief system in their own religion and just going yeah. along with it. You know what I'm saying? Once you see individuals that are supposed to be um, uh, head leaders. Yeah, head leaders and you see them make mistakes and stuff. Not that you're judging them, but mm -hmm. you're like, so man, right. It's kind of a lot of them. So, what was your first encounter with Islam or Muslim? You know, when was it? You know, <laughs> the first, first time, time? Um, I seen a Muslim, I, I really heard a Muslim talk. Mm. Um, of course, he was uh, well, he was African American, mm -hmm. like, but he was more or less on the um, nation of Islam. Yeah, he was more or less on the nation of Islam. Mm. But he was, but I was hearing what he was saying, though, mm -hmm. but I was like, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't talking uh, at that time mm -hmm. when I listened to him. He was talking about of like who God was. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, you know, God, you know, he's above all, all this. And I was like, well, that makes sense. It makes sense to me. Okay, so your first encounter with Nation of Islam, yeah. but they were mainly teaching about God, yeah. the attributes of God. The attributes of it. Okay, that's interesting. So how did you become Muslim, you know, um, your Shahada? Mm. How you took your Shahada when, you know, how, you, how did it go about? Mm -hmm. Well, um, when I was in college, um, some of the classes and courses that I used to take, mm -hmm. um, they were more or less African American history. Mm -hmm. And so, <coughs> excuse me, when I was in high school and stuff, that was one of my uh, favorite subject history, because mm -hmm. I was looking, I was looking at the culture and how you know how people live, what they believe, what they eat, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. When I was uh, in college, I was doing a lot of African American studies because I wanted to find out, you know, who am I? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and who we were. Mm -hmm. And uh, and one thing that I noticed, the more and more I kept uh, digging deep into um, uh, history, the African American history, not just here in America, but before we even got here, mm -hmm. and you would see that uh, uh, our uh, most of our ancestors were Muslim. Mm -hmm. And, uh, most people think that um, uh, our history started here, we just slaves. Mm -hmm. So we were just sitting over there just relaxing. <laughs> and they came and picked us up. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so when she, that, that was, that's the route basically that led you to investigate Islam. Yeah, because I remember one of the things that that, that that individual said is that he said, you can't know your future unless you know your past. Mm -hmm. So... He, he would uh, uh, instill in us, mm -hmm. learn your history, learn your history, learn your history. So once you learn your history, what what is it that about Islam that attracted you, that made you say, this is the right lifestyle for me? Mm. Uh, well, one of the things that I, I did and stuff was being that I came from a Christian background mm -hmm. and my whole family, mm -hmm. yeah, Christian, Baptist, some of them, they believe in... Uh, Jesus Christ uh, mm -hmm. differently, mm -hmm. even though they're in the same book, we all believe in them differently. Mm -hmm. So I was like, when I did, uh, when I was doing my research, African American history, I wanted to make sure because mm -hmm. I knew that I'd be stepping away mm -hmm. from Christianity. This is something that I've known all my life. Mm -hmm. This is what I thought. This is why I was told that that it was true. Yeah. So after I got to uh, doing my research on Christianity, mm -hmm. the origins of it, and mm -hmm. um, and how it came about. Yeah, you know, how it came about, but mm -hmm. then also when I focus on Al Islam mm -hmm. and I'm noticing this stuff, it was, it's, it's more or less not the prophets talking, mm -hmm. it's God talking. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, whoa, so this is what God's saying to you. This is how you're going to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. This is how, you know, he can connect to you mm -hmm. with the whole truth. 
So you you uh, you gotta basically read the scriptures, the Quran. Really reading the Quran, mm -hmm. uh, even though it was uh, you know the translation. Mm -hmm. But uh, I got the author, uh, um, not the author. I got the translator of mm -hmm. Yusuf Ali. No, this was Pickenthal, believe it or not. Wow. <laughs> he so, speaks all English. Yeah, all English. He said all like a ye and thou. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I was like, okay, but but like once you get over that, mm -hmm. the ye and thou, and listen to the message of it, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, you know what I'm saying? This still makes sense. And that's one of the things that I kept saying. I noticed that I kept saying, mm -hmm. well, like when I would find something enlightening mm -hmm. in, in Al Islam, mm -hmm. and I would always say, you know what I'm saying? This makes sense to me. This makes sense to me. Mm. So basically, you was resonating with your your nature mm -hmm. and it was making sense to your intellect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was the thing that attracted you by Islam. Mm -hmm. So, but how did you become Muslim, though? You know, which process did you take to oh. become Shahada? You know, uh. your first encounter. You know, were you nervous? No, I was. You know, after after uh, after I was doing my. African American studies and mm -hmm. religious studies, and, mm -hmm. and I was comparing the two. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you're going to read about certain things and stuff. The most important stuff, mm -hmm. Islam and stuff, it's not just a religion. Mm -hmm. One thing that I like, it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's how you carry yourself, how you eat, how you walk, how you talk, how you interact yeah. with individuals. Mm -hmm. So it's a, so it covers, that's, that's the thing that really captured me, mm -hmm. that it covers everything. You know what I'm saying? Even um, even how we go to the bathroom, even how we sleep with our wives, we don't have girlfriends. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it's, it's, it just seemed like a cleaner, mm -hmm. peaceful way of life. MashaAllah. Mm -hmm. So the day that you took Shahada, you know, mm -hmm. tell me about that. Well, the day, well, I tell you the days, the weeks before leading up to that. Okay. Because, you, well, you know. Well, at, what episode happened in your life? Yeah. So, um, you know, when I was in the military and stuff, you know, we have to, you know, go in the chow hall, they eat and stuff. It's like a regular cafeteria, mm -hmm. but, you know, it was so much pork. But see, I never focused in on that before. Mm -hmm. But, like, this one morning, mm -hmm. I was standing, I was like, I'm not going to eat pork no more. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no, I read mean, this book and I was like, because I remember what it said about eating pork. So, mm -hmm. from, from that day, mm -hmm. I just stopped eating pork. That was like, maybe 1990. SubhanAllah. Yeah. And but I only took my son like I think like a year later, but I had already had stopped eating pork. So basically, you start preparing yourself. Yeah. So how how did it go? Like uh, when you went to talk to the imam, where I want to become Muslim. Or... Yeah. And that that's the yeah. that's the crack of the matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the uh, uh, so so like you know because I was like hanging around. It was it was six of us all together, mm -hmm. and um, they had already took their sahara. Mm, so, you were, <laughs> so, so some people they yeah. were in condition. And so like we was all, you know, young soldiers hanging together. Yeah. And uh, we didn't drink, we didn't go out and we were just always just reading about African American history. And so they uh, one of them was Michael, he had brought in you know, he had brought in Quran, so so we always passed on and just read it. Mm -hmm. And but we had done our own research, so we had stopped being the pork and stuff and mm -hmm. and so the day that I wanted to become it was a Sunday. Mm. And I just woke up, I said, you know what, mm. today I'm going to be a Muslim because I haven't done my research. Yeah. That's one of the most important things that um, that I learned <clears throat> since I have uh, become a Muslim. Mm. We don't just do things just up and about, we just spring up and do it. Mm. Uh, we have to uh, uh, investigate. Uh, yeah, we, have to, we have to do our investigation, mm. cross references and make sure that we're doing things correctly. Mm -hmm. And so I had done that and I was like, now, um, no more comfortable. Yeah, I say that uh, I want to be a Muslim. So I, I I talked to the older guy. He was in the military too, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Well, yeah." He said, "Well, you know what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, well, if you for sure, mm -hmm. uh, you just have to, you know, uh, make that declaration. But you have to be strong with it. You have to believe in it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't just well. I'm just feeling this way now. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I would encourage anyone before you do it, they do your research to make sure that they that the research that you're doing is authentic and, yeah. and, and correct authentic. source. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, I, I always get this um this feeling or this um subhanallah, you say. Basically people who become Muslims, mm -hmm. 
they tell me that they have this experience, this mm-hmm. feeling when they become Muslim, it's indescribable. Yeah. Did that yeah. ever happen to you? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I remember uh, like that. I remember like it was yesterday. It was a Sunday. Yeah. It was Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, after I had took my Shahada, you know what I'm saying? And so you were part of a new you were part of a new family, part yeah. of the largest brotherhood it is. Yeah. And uh, I felt conf- I felt so confident mm-hmm. that I made the right decision. Mm-hmm. But I noticed, like the next day I was at work, yeah. I was so happy because it was like it was like the blind, the wool was, uh, was like removed from yeah, it was like everything was like removed, so you see things clearly, Clear. and you don't uh, have a, a burden of not understanding, but just go along because everybody else doing something. But yeah. uh, but I knew I knew mm-hmm. you know some time was like nah man this is it. I was just happy. I, I was just sit there. And just be smiling. I'm Muslim now. MashaAllah, that's beautiful, man. That's one thing that I I usually hear from Rivers. I think that that's a gift that yeah. Allah gave you. Us who are born Muslim, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's you know, another thing. But see, cause also so because we know where we coming from. Yeah, like out there in the dunya and stuff. Yeah. We already know where we come from. We already know what that's about. Okay. Right? And like we probably got tangled up in the dunya uh, spider web. Yeah. So you done came from there. You done, yeah. like, you know, it's like, you're like, nah, man, you know, I don't need that to live my life. Mashallah. Mashallah. So did you face any challenge or obstacle after you become Muslim? Cause some, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that when you become Muslim, mm-hmm. you have to realize yourself you are going to be that different person. Mm-hmm. It's not that you're trying to be, mm-hmm. but people are going to know you from another way, mm-hmm. how you used to be. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you guys used to hang out or, you know, and, and do all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. But but like when you tell them like, hey man, you know what I'm saying, I don't do that no more, they're going to look at you like, whoa. This guy's you? a stranger. <laughs> like, you? Like that. Yeah. But uh, it's just you want to... Um, you're gonna to have to go back and, and to like let them know, mm-hmm. like, hey man, you know what I'm saying? I don't do that no more. I don't drink or I don't do drugs anymore. I don't taste, you know. You got to. Uh, that's why I say so. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? This is a, this is a way of life. It's not something you just, you know, you just take up like a couple of months. This is your life. Man. So what about your family I, and friend? How did you react when you <laughs> yeah, were Muslim? Like, well, you know, so being that I'm from down south, you yeah. born and raised. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so you know that they cook pork and everything. You know? <laughs> so one of the things that uh, I remember when I told my mom, mm-hmm. uh, I called her, yeah. and uh, I told my mom and stuff, and she was like, "So," and I, I and, and and I think the first thing came out was, "So you don't eat pork no more." <laughs> like, no, I don't eat pork no more. So you only eat for breakfast. No, I don't eat that. But mm-hmm. when you come to your family, you you know you are the ambassador. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Of what Al Islam is. Mm-hmm. And so I would tell anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, so when if you find that you're the only one mm-hmm. in your family of Muslim, mm-hmm. they taking Islam off of what you do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of like what you're saying. Because trust me, they watch it. It's, it's not in a negative way, mm-hmm. but they want to see what the difference is. So you know what I'm saying? What that made him put down Christmas in Jesus Christ. And you know what I'm saying? He don't eat breakfast, you know what I'm saying? He don't eat bacon with us no more. So you are the ambassador. So I would I would advise anyone to do your research and know where you where you're getting your uh, information from, make sure that is it is correct. Mm-hmm. So you didn't face too much challenges by just normal reaction that you would get from mm-hmm. people and stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what about what kind of advice can you give to people who are on the same path, they're following the similar path, they're looking mm-hmm. for truth, but they need some advice on you know what to do, how, how to go the about it. The first thing I would tell them is read the Quran. Mm-hmm. If they're doing research about Islam. Read the Quran. The first thing I would tell anyone, mm-hmm. read the Quran. Because mm-hmm. that's, you know, it, even though it may be translated, mm-hmm. but that's a lot reaching out, that's a lot speaking to you. Mashallah. You see what I'm saying? So how can you know what God is saying if you don't listen to what he said? You know, if you don't read the book that he had revealed to us. Okay, alhamdulillah. What kind of advice can you give to um general mass of Muslims concerned about new shahadas, how we're supposed to deal with them, you know, 
obstacles that they go through. Yeah. One of the things that um, you have to realize is you have to be patient because mm-hmm. he is a new Shahada mm-hmm. or she's a new Shahada. Mm-hmm. She's going to be used to doing things. Mm-hmm. Or, or she may not know mm-hmm. all the etiquettes, mm-hmm. uh, all the adapt mm-hmm. manners that we're supposed to act towards each other, mm-hmm. uh, towards us Muslims mm-hmm. and non-Muslims. Mm-hmm. Where well, I've come across Muslims, they, they, they would have correct manners towards each other, mm-hmm. but then they would treat the, uh, the unbelievers differently. Mm-hmm. But Muhammad was never like that. He, he treated fairly. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things you was known about. He was honesty, mm-hmm. and he always did transactions fair. He was, you know, kind to of people, even though people, wow. SubhanAllah. Yeah, so basically, deal with them were well. You, you know, got to deal with them with love, or you got to be nice because they just new to it. Yeah, they are. So you had to realize this is all new to them, mm-hmm. and uh, I've come, I've seen it before. Mm-hmm. And you may see them do something wrong, and you will see the brother or the sister come off so hard. Oh, brother, you can't do it. like, hey man, you don't, you know, when you talk to them, so there's there's a way how to how, approach. Yeah, how the prophet Salah, prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How he create, how he even created, cr- corrected people when they done things wrong, mm-hmm. and that's our best example. Yeah. If anything I learned since I took my sahara, mm-hmm. is to follow his example. Mm-hmm. He's the best example. He's the best example. So, do you want to say any last word before we close out the the story? Anything you want to add? Anything you want to yeah. share? One of the things that I would like to share mm-hmm. to uh, non-believers uh, of Al Islam, mm-hmm. and, and you know, if you have questions mm-hmm. about Al Islam, or you may see uh, a person that's a Muslim do something, mm-hmm. just ask them. I say we have to answer that question, even though we may not know the answer, the uh, correct answer. Mm-hmm. But ask us. Don't you know? Don't just look on TV or what the thing that they put on YouTube. Mm-hmm. If you see a Muslim, ask them. Say, hey, you know what I'm saying? Why y'all fast like that 30 days? Mm-hmm. What's that about? Mm-hmm. That's good. We would like to thank the, uh, the guests for coming, you know, visiting us. It was a pleasure, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for it. So we will go cl- we're going to close out here. We close with subhanahu wa bihamdihi ashara la ila anta wa astaghfiruqa wa atubu ilayhi. We greet you with a greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa maghfirah. وفداؤه أرواحنا وقتيله ريحان وشهيدنا بدمائه في جنة الرضوان وفداؤه أرواحنا وقتيله ريحان وشهيدنا بدمائه في جنة الرضوان وهداية لشعوبنا ولكفر